Good afternoon. <laughs> May I have your attention, please? Before we start, I would like to remind everyone to turn off their mobile phones. <laughs> you can still take pictures, just turn off the sound. Please rise. Thank you, you may be seated. Honored guests, visitors from far and near, colleagues and our dear students, welcome to the 2018 IAG closing ceremony. I would also like to welcome visitors from around the world who are with us today via live stream. I would also like to thank Cristiano, who has snuck away, for the beautiful music from Paulinho Nogueira called Bacchianinho Juan. Let's give him another round of applause. My name is Gina Forno, and I work in the Student Affairs Office. I'm very honored to be your Master of Ceremonies today. My dear students, you look great. What an important day this is for you. You must be so excited. I can hear you're very excited, and also a little sad at the same time. All very normal on graduation day. I remember so well the day you arrived back in October 2016. It was a beautiful, sunny autumn day. You had a long trip behind you and an even bigger journey ahead of you. You have all worked so hard 
through the modules and exams, field work and field trips and group work, and finally your thesis and defense. But there were relaxing times too, like the social evenings, parties at Mina, trips to Paris, and the Keukenhof to see the flowers. Maybe you had adventures with your Dutch friends, danced in the flash mob on the market square for World Water Day, or won a trophy at the International Sports Day. How many of you saw snow for the first time while you were here? Go ahead, raise your hands. Mm -hmm. And who dared to walk on the frozen canals just a few weeks ago? Good for you. Who has learned to eat French fries with mayonnaise? Raw herring, a croquette, or bitter bala, or a capsulon? <laughs> Who can say a few words in Dutch? <laughs> Who hopes to return to Delft someday? Yeah, yeah. Who is expecting reverse culture shock when you return home in the coming days and weeks? Reverse culture shock. Who has formed friendships here that will last a lifetime? Yeah. My dear graduates, it's been a pleasure working with you these past 18 months and watching you succeed. We are very proud of each of you. You've learned about water. You've learned about yourselves. Now it's time to receive your diplomas, say goodbye to your friends, and head into the next phase of your lives. We wish you all the best. <clears throat> now I would like to invite up to the stage Professor Eddie Moores, Rector of IHE Delft. Thank you, uh, Gina. And um, I'm really uh, honored to, to be here. Uh, for me, it's also the first time, so I'm also learning something. So I think I join all uh, the students that are sitting here. And I'm looking forward, uh, actually, to say a few words uh, to you. First of all, I would like uh, to welcome uh, all the ambassadors that are here. And I know uh, that it's, uh, it's not so easy to hear, because I also know that they uh, got an invitation from our king. Uh, so sometimes you have to compete a little bit. Uh, but I think uh, all those ambassadors that are able to come here, a very thank you to be here. And I hope that you will also enjoy dinner later on uh, tonight. But besides um, actually the ambassadors, I think also there are representatives here of uh, different uh, ministries, um, also from the donors who uh, partly made it also possible for you to come here and to have your fellowship. And uh, some of the donors that are also represented here. Uh, donors like uh, our Ministry of Foreign Affairs through the Small Island uh, program that uh, we had, of which we will have a number of students actually receiving uh, their MSc diploma today. And I think also uh, from uh, Annie, for example, uh, with whom uh, we signed a new collaboration for the coming years uh, from Uruguay uh, to have uh, more people coming here as well, but also to strengthen our collaboration. And the same is true, for example, for the Rotary um, International that also provided a number of fellowships here. And also with them, we are working on a continuation of these uh, relationships. But also other uh, programs, like from the World Meteorological Organization, uh, but also from uh, the Asian Development Bank and other donors are all providing uh, fellowships to make it possible for you uh, to come here. And I would like to thank all those donors that uh, made it possible. So um, I think besides uh, those donors, I think we are also starting other partnerships. And I think it's very nice to have a nice delegation here from Argentina today, where we have uh, people representing actually uh, the, the ministry. And I think that's a, a little bit of a special case because uh, it's also one of our alumni who is uh, actually representing this ministry now. I will later say a few more words about that and he will also tell something to you. Um, but also the university and also the company, the ISI company from uh, water and sanitation, 
uh, from Argentina. So you also see this strong collaboration from different entities from a country that uh, work together and make it also possible uh, for us uh, to have you here. But more important, I think, is also to enable us to send you back. Uh, I, I would like to keep you here, don't, don't get me wrong, but I think it's also very important that uh, after spending some time here in Delft that you return to your own country and that you make a difference there. And I hope that you will also be inspired a bit for that by what you will hear later on um, this afternoon. With that, I would like to welcome all the students that will graduate today, but also um, family and uh, I think Dutch friends that are also sitting here in the, the church that have been, um, I think, walking the road together with you uh, partly, but also family and friends that could not be here, but hopefully are able to follow you through our live stream uh, connection. So welcome to you all. And I hope that uh, with IG Delft, we were able to provide you uh, with education, what was uh, mentioned by Gina as well, um, but also in a way uh, that uh, it was not only traditional, uh, but hopefully um, it also has opened your eyes and broadened your minds a bit, uh, not only because you brought to us different cultures, which we think is very important, but also uh, that you were able to see uh, different ways how you can approach the different problems that are related to the water sector. And there uh, we very strongly are uh, looking at how we can bring different disciplines together. And I know from uh, some of your thesis that I think you went very far in, in bringing those disciplines together and getting a holistic view on how you could look at new developments, new solutions in the water sector. So, we thank you for that, because I think with your presence, you also brought our institute one step further in the knowledge that we try to gather all the time on water-related issues. We also hope uh, that your experience at IGS prepares you for the next step and the next stage in your life. Um, we hope that that will also be a boost for your uh, career. And um, I hope that the knowledge that we gave you is enough to do that, but we also think that it's important that you don't stop here. We hope that you also see this as one step in your life and that you will continue making further steps in the remainder of uh, your career. And uh, with that, uh, I think it's also important uh, that uh, we believe uh, that it's uh, important for you to act in an ethical way. And I know that especially when you arrived here, there were some discussions about that, but also later on. We think it's important because uh, we hope uh, and we expect actually from you that you will demonstrate this ethical knowledge also in uh, the career and what you will do because I think by that you will really make a sustainable difference in what you are trying to achieve in your career and in your life. The small book uh, that you will receive today, that's a book about uh, wisdom, it's also called the Water Wisdom Book. And actually, the book is an, an, a, an a collection of uh, poems and uh, short stories about water. And all those poems and short stories, they were collected by alumni, so people that were sitting on these benches uh, before you. And we hope that these books will also inspire you maybe to look at uh, different solutions, maybe in a somewhat different way on uh, water-related problems, but maybe also on your uh, steps in life uh, that you will take soon after this one. I would also like to welcome the alumni com community, and uh, I think that uh, we are proud to support the largest water network in the world, and it's now also your network, because you will also be one of our alumni. And uh, I hope that uh, that's a way how we can uh, keep on connecting with you. I hope to meet you also in your country, or that you will have a possibility to come back uh, to Delft. Um, maybe nice to know is that we re recently launched a new initiative uh, where we have alumni coordinators in the different countries and uh, those alumni coordinators are actively engaging with the groups. So if you go back, uh, please try to connect with them and if you look for our support there, then please let us know. We will try to help you out. If you want to know more about that, uh, then please also have a look at our websites and we do hope that with all this uh, we will stay involved with you and that we also will stay in contact. So I wish you all a memorable and a very pleasant day. And uh, I hope you will enjoy this day. Uh, before uh, you will get an Im Im important piece of paper that you need to take home, there are some other uh, small parts in the program here. 
And uh, with that, I would first like to introduce to you our next speaker, which is uh, Niels uh, Derricks. And uh, Niels uh, works at uh, Just Dig It, uh, which is an NGO uh, that uh, jumpstarts uh, landscape restoration uh, programs. And at present, uh, this NGO is, is mainly active in Africa, but they're also looking at uh, possibilities in other continents. So I think it's also an open invitation not only to listen to what Niels has to say, but also maybe to engage with him afterwards and see if you can also bring this connection uh, back home. Niels, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, and congratulations to, uh, to all of you. And I must say I'm really impressed by just looking at this group. I've uh, received some emails from Rudd in advance stating how many nationalities there are in this group, and I counted 57, and that's really amazing for, for one course. Uh, and I think this is the closest I'll ever come to uh, addressing the General Assembly of the United Nations, talking to so many people uh, at once. But congratulations on all your hard work, and I also would like to acknowledge, of course, all the family present, uh, but also watching via, uh, uh, via weblink in this beautiful historic location in the, in the ancient city of, uh, of, uh, of Delft. Uh, and it's really an honor for me to speak here. Um, just a few minutes to, to give you some uh, a tiny bit of wisdom until you part uh, and spread your wings out over the globe. I'm, uh, luckily, I heard that you have the chance to witness another King's Day this Friday. Uh, last year was, uh, you could, uh, uh, was a rehearsal for you, and this year you can do it really properly and uh, all the Dutch way. But thank you for, uh, for giving me this opportunity. So myself, as Eddie introduced, I, um, I work for a Dutch organization called Just Dig It, but I have a somewhat odd background. I uh, started in the military of the Netherlands, uh, did some missions in Afghanistan, and unfortunately, I didn't see any students from Afghanistan here, but I did see some students from uh, neighboring uh, uh, Pakistan. Uh, and then I worked in the corporate world, and then I saw the light, and I decided to uh, do something to, uh, let's say, to improve the world. Yeah, I see myself also as a, a shareholder in, uh, in planet Earth, and I try to do everything to uh, what I can within my power to, uh, to make it a little bit better. Um, and now I work at Just Dig It, and Just Dig It is, a, is, a, is an organization that's active in landscape restoration, and we focus, as Eddie was saying, mainly on, uh, on sub-Saharan Africa at the moment. Um, and we do regreening. Yeah, so land that has been uh, uh, degraded, we try to regreen it by using rainwater harvesting, and that's also why we have a link with uh, IHE. We work a lot with local partners in these countries, and I think uh, probably more than a few of you will also start working for those partners uh, in the near future, so I also see you as, uh, as colleagues in that sense. Um, but what I think that makes us different from the rest, and that's also what I want to talk about in this uh, 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 today with you is, is skill. We always try to think bigger. Uh, and that's also the main message that I want to bring to you today, is to think big. Because yeah, I really think you are the generation, you are the people who have all the assets, all the resources in-house to, uh, to solve the problems we currently have in the world. And they can only be addressed if we think about it another way than we have been doing in the past. And you have everything in-house to make that uh, to make that happen. I hope I can make that case to you in the next few minutes, and that you will bring this uh, with you to your, uh, uh, yeah, to your hometown. Um, I think you have four, four things that matter. You have dedication, you have the knowledge, you have the network, and you have the attitude. And the dedication already shows by the fact that you have been here and have been applying to this program, because yeah? you've been here for 18 months away from home, and your home sometimes literally on the other side of, uh, of the earth to dedicate yourself to, uh, to learning, to, uh, to becoming a better person and to bringing that knowledge back to your, uh, to your home. This really is a, is a large sacrifice. I, uh, I really understand that. And not only for you, but also for your, for your family. And I'm sure that, that one of the students who will speak as well will also thank their family. But just to make sure, I want a small applause for your family. Uh, and for keeping up with you for the past 18 months. Um, 
And the second part, uh, why I think you have all the resources to change the world, is the knowledge. Uh, IHE is really one of the foremost institutes on water education in the world. Uh, and I want to really also to say that it's important to, to don't keep your knowledge in your pocket. Uh, knowledge, uh, for knowledge's sake, isn't worth anything, but knowledge put into action or shared with others can really, uh, can really change the world. Uh, so I would also really like to ask from you uh, to share this knowledge with others in your, uh, in your country, but also to put it into action. And action mainly, meaning not only papers, uh, but also into applicable action uh, that makes, uh, makes your country and the world a little bit better. And I think the third strength you have is your network. Uh, if you're sitting here with people of, of 57 seven different countries, that's really an, an amazing network that, that can and should be uh, put to use. And not only be put to use for your next holiday, that you have a nice place uh, to stay in a nice, uh, nice other country, but also in a practical sense to make impact in the world. Uh, and that goes farther than using it as an academic network, but it's also really connecting to each other and see how can together, how can we make impact in the world. And as Eddie also uh, was saying, this, this network is even bigger than a group of students that are sitting here. It's also the, uh, the large alumni network of IHE, and together it's, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's the biggest alumni network in this sector in the world. And if you really use it, you can really make an impact with that. And let's say the fourth and, and final resource that you, uh, uh, that you possess is your attitude. And I think this is a, is a very special generation that you are part of. Uh, the, what they call the millennial, millennial generation. Uh, I'm on the verge of the millennial generation. I was born in 1980. Uh, once people start uh, complaining about millennials, and I say, no, I'm Generation uh, X. <laughs> I, I don't, uh, I'm not part of that. But once they talk about, let's say, the positive uh, things of the millennial generation, uh, wanting to make a positive impact, changing the world, digitally native, uh, yeah, then I want to be a part of that, of course. And I think you guys are all part of that. Yeah, you've been raised in a world in which new technologies have, uh, have arisen, social media have arisen, uh, and there are um, yeah. endless resources that you can utilize and that we still hardly understand until this moment to make a positive impact in the world. Yeah, the Arab Spring has, has, has mainly arisen through social media. There's a totally new political party in France that has presented itself through social media. All these kinds of things are happening now, and we should harness those uh, those forces and use them for, uh, for good. Uh, so I really would like to ask you to, to think big. Uh, if you bring this knowledge that you have, your network, uh, the, the, the media of today, um, the attitude that you bring to the table, I think you can do more than just make a career or make a living. I think at the same time, yes, you can act small and, and really do your best in your job, but you can also change the world and you should change, change the world. Uh, normally, 40 years ago, we had all the time in the world. You had the time to make a first uh, uh, earn your marks, and then you could make an impact 30 years on. But all the major problems we are facing today need to be solved within the coming 5 to 10 or 15 years. And you will have to play a really big uh, part in that. And you have to be at least part of the solution, but probably you will be the ones bringing the solutions to us. So uh, that's a heavy burden for you to, uh, uh, to carry, but I think it's also uh, something that you will live up to. Uh, so I would like to ask all of you to not only make a living, but also think and act big. And you can do it in multiple ways. Uh, you don't, we don't all have to be Mark Zuckerbergs or Jack Mays or whatever. You can do it within your job. Uh, if you're going to corporate life or in a business, uh, you can relentlessly try to make business models that are not only have, a, have, let's say, a positive impact on the bottom line, but also have a positive impact on the environment or social impact. Uh, if you're uh, in a large international organization uh, that normally runs slowly, uh, you can be the corporate entrepreneur within that organization. Uh, you can try to innovate, see how things can move faster and how you can bring this modern technology to, uh, to bear. If you work on a small small-scale project somewhere in, I don't know, in Kenya, in Kajado County, and you have discovered some things that really work, share it with the rest of the world, share it with your network. If you live in Bangladesh, right, with all the water problems you are receiving there, make sure the rest of the world sees it. 
use inter Instagram, use social media, and see if you can this way influence politics to help and to combat uh, climate change. So it's a big challenge I, uh, I put here uh, <laughs> in front of you, because I know you've, uh, you've worked hard for this and you now go back to your countries. But I really ask you not only to go make a career, but also to, to try yes, to, to have a large impact, to have a big impact on the world. Because you cannot fail. Because yeah, even if, if your ideas do, do not work, you are still acting local, you are still doing good. And even if one in 10 or one in 50 of you succeeds in doing something really big that makes a large impact, yeah, that means that it's, uh, that means it's a better world for, for you, for me, for my children, and, uh, and for your children. So I want to thank you in advance uh, uh, for that. But that's really the challenge I would like to, to put in front of you today. Last thing I would like to say is, uh, Take some time to enjoy. I heard you have a nice party uh, uh, this evening, and I'm really looking forward to talking to, uh, to more of you afterwards. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Niels. And I would like uh, actually to uh, announce uh, the second uh, speaker of today. And uh, the second speaker of uh, today is uh, Pablo Beretjar Tua. And apologies if I don't pronounce your name correct. I have to practice my Spanish a lot more. Interesting here is uh, that uh, Pablo has been our former IT student. And actually, at the moment, he is the Secretary of State of uh, Infrastructure and Water Policy from Argentina. And I think um, it's uh, something special as well. So for that special occasion, can I invite you here? Because I would like to give you something. And um, I, I, I don't know if you recognize this, this uh, container a little bit. Um, it has uh, to do with the fact that actually a uh, long time ago when, when uh, Pablo was here, um, he was already looking at his next step in a career and didn't have time actually to sit in the benches where you're sitting today and receive this. So um, I, I'm not going to give your, your certificate now. <laughs> yeah. So of, of course he passed. Yeah, but. but <laughs> Well, what I'm giving here now is actually an, an other certificate that he's getting, and that's a certificate uh, where we would like to recognize all the contributions that you have uh, done for IG Delft as alumni. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I think that uh, um, I, I will give the floor to you in a second, but what, what I hope that you will do is uh, please listen to uh, what Pablo has to say. And I think uh, by just looking at him, I think he's such a, a nice example. And I do hope and I do wish uh, that you will all follow the same sort of tracks. So, Pablo, oh, please. Big, big thing. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. Hello, everybody. And uh, thank you, Eddie, for this introduction. Uh, you have put me in a big challenge, I have to say. And uh, I want to recognize a speech that we just heard, which I fully endorse. I think uh, when I was listening to Niels, I, I was just at every time thinking, well, he's telling my words. I truly believe what he is saying. So, uh, but I, I want to add some of my personal experience. So first of all, I want to say thank you to the leading authorities of the institution here for the possibility of uh, giving these few words to you. Uh, and also thank you for the experience of having been at IHE. So uh, I, as uh, Eddie told, I couldn't be in the ceremony because I had to leave earlier. And that was something that kept giving rounds in my mind, as you see, because it was a very strong experience to be at IHE. So I want to tell very briefly that when I came here, it was some 22 years ago, and I think I am in a way, an, a sort of a humbly example of the message that I would like to give to you. 
which is dream really big, as you just heard, I didn't expect when I was at AHE that I was going to become a Secretary of State of my country. And now that I am a Secretary of State, it looks to me that all the things that I learned here are very, very useful. And that the network that I shaped when I was at AHE is still an asset to me in order to achieve some of the very challenging goals that we are looking for in Argentina. So all that you've heard, I think, is totally true. Now, I want also to tell you that I truly believe that we are in a defining moment and that many things are changing right now. Sometimes we don't realize it. But if you compare 22 years ago when I was here, IHE was just at the very, very beginning of getting email. So I learned to use an email here in 1994, and it was a whole novelty. Nobody knew how to use it. At that time also, there was no Waze. There was no Uber. We didn't have smartphones. So many of the things that today seem totally normal to all of us were not there. So I think this is a sign that we are in what some people believe, and me too, is a total revolution in knowledge, and that we are in the acceleration phase of that revolution in knowledge, and that the main capacity of all of our societies is the capacity to innovate. And in order to innovate, you need to have knowledge in your mind, and innovation is the outcome of collaboration. So it's impossible to innovate alone. Nobody can innovate alone under a tree. You have to be a member of a constellation. You have to count on the others. You have to be able to combine the knowledge in order to come up with new solutions. And the good news is that that is ever simpler, and it will be even more so in the coming future. Very recently, I read a book that some of you may know by Yuval Harari. He's a historian, and he has written a couple of books, but the last one is called Homo Deus. And in that book, he mentions that things are really changing, and that in this century, in the coming years, we are going to become even more powerful than what we believe we will. And that algorithms, the capacity of combining knowledge, big data, artificial intelligence, biotechnology, will be a way to come up with new solutions to many of the big challenges in society. So I would like to end with a message that we have the big opportunity of reshaping our relationship with nature. And water is definitely at the center of that big challenge, but also a big opportunity of really achieving sustainable development. And that you have the big opportunity now, but also the responsibility of leading that particular change. And that in a more recent book that I just finished a week ago, I think there is a message that is very significant for this occasion. The book is a book by Nassim Taleb. You may, may know him. He's a very original thinker. And Nassim, in that book, which is called A Skin in the Game, says that the really key issue is not only having knowledge, but also using it taking a part in the solution. And my humble experience right now in my country, Argentina, is that when you get involved, you can do many, many things. And so my final message to you is a big congratulation to all of you, your families, the people that I'm sure supported you to get to this stage, and a big, big message of put your skin in the game, use your capacity, and improve the world. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Professor Dr. Bere Siartua. Ladies and gentlemen, for our surprise interlude, Cristiano and Maria will now perform two classic songs. I don't really even need to introduce them. Imagine by John Lennon, and with a little help from my friends by the Beatles, of course. Imagine there's no countries It seemed hard to do Nothing to kill or die for And no religion to Yes, I'm certain that it happens all the time. 
What do you see when you turn off the light? I can't tell you, but I know it's mine. Oh, I, I get, get by with a little help from my friends. Mm, I get high with a little help from my friends. Mm, gonna try with a little help from my friends. Do you need anybody? I just need someone to love. Could it be? So thank you very much, uh, Maria and Cristiano. I think I really enjoyed it very much. And I think it's also nice to bring arts and humanities uh, together with sciences. So uh, thanks a lot. And I think uh, with that, I need help of two friends. And uh, I would like uh, to call them uh, forward. And um, I think I see them somewhere in the back. But uh, I would like to ask uh, Miss Angela Rada Haritza forward but also uh, Jason Ernest. And um, while they're coming here, I will explain a little bit uh, the, the difficult task that I asked them to do. Yes, I thought it would be nice to hear something about what, what people do also during their study. So I told them, okay, if you ever want to start a job or you need something, uh, then often uh, you only get a very limited of time. And uh, that's what we sometimes call a pitch. So I asked them to give you a pitch and the pitch is something where you step in the elevator of maybe a 10, 20 story high building and you only have the time while the elevator goes from the bottom to the top to explain what you really think is important and what you need. So I asked that to Angela and Ernest and I, I think uh, they were shivering a little bit, but I'm very curious now to hear from them. And I think Angela, would you like to start? Yeah. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as we know, one of the most important and vital resources is water. And taking into account that two and a half percent of the total global water is fresh water, all our efforts should strive to preserve it as much as we can. Now, one of the main sources of pollution come from, uh, comes from our anthropogenic activities in the urban and rural, rural areas, also industrial. And on the most recent report from UNESCO, 80% of the total wastewater produced is not treated. This is pretty shocking, right? So new wastewater technologies should deliver high quality effluent and at the same time strive for sustainability to be able to fit within a circular economy strategy. Among many technologies in the market, natural methods for wastewater have gained more and more attention due to their low energy requirements, their simplicity, and lower operational cost. That's why I have, focused on my, I have focused my PhD on the wastewater treatment with natural methods, more specifically in the study of the symbiosis between microalgae and aerobic bacteria, with the final objective of proposing a new innovative technology. Now, in the symbiosis, microalgae provides oxygen to the aerobic bacteria through photosynthesis. In that way, bacteria can oxidize organic compounds and nutrients, while at the same time, microalgae can bioassimilate other contaminants. Based on our experiments in the laboratory, we have concluded that the symbiosis can achieve high quality effluence of different pollutants. And let's remember and keep in mind that one of the main sources of energy is the sun. This is one of the reasons that makes this symbiosis competitive with other technologies in the market. Now, for instance, a reactor using this symbiosis consumes around 25 times less energy per cubic meter of wastewater treated than an activated sludge system that is one of the most known and used wastewater technologies. Also, we have proved that by using this symbiosis between microalgae and bacteria, the required area can be reduced by half when compared with other systems in which just algae is used. 
One of the most important contribution is the development of a mathematical model, which will help with the design, operation strategy, and application of this technology. In fact, nowadays, IH is working with partners in the Middle East on the next step for this technology, which is a project to scale up the technology to a real and pilot scale and to prove the, result, to prove the results found so far in the laboratory. Okay, but this is just one of the solutions for the many problems that are in the water sector. So now I want to invite you today in your graduation to work in symbiosis with your peers and to take the next step in your careers using all the scientific and personal knowledge that you acquire in IHE. So congratulations on your graduation and enjoy it. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Communities are increasingly being affected by weather-related hazards. These are attributed to climate change and extreme weather variability. Over the past 20 years, they have caused hundreds of thousands of deaths and billions of dollars worth of damage. Of the weather-related events, one such hazard is flooding. Due to the many factors, many communities exist in flood-prone areas. In many instances, it is often difficult to relocate people due to the prohibitive cost or the lack of political will. The paradigm shift is from building bigger and better flood defenses to one of flood forecasting and early warning systems. Hydroinformatics plays an important role in trying to replicate nature using mathematical computer-based models so as to predict flood events. The end result is to produce information for informing communities about the level of flood risk. It is about creating that bridge between data software tools, and the society. However, even in the presence of reliable data about the possibility of flooding, residents are still surprised when it occurs. Research has shown that upon hearing news of potential flooding, people normally look for a second opinion for validation. For my thesis, I chose to develop a flood forecast and warning web tool inside of Facebook because most persons turn to social media during a disaster or warning of potential disaster. Facebook was chosen because of over the 3 billion social media users, Facebook represents 70% of that number. The result of a flood forecast model and flood risk maps generated using hydroinformatic tools, in addition to other data and information, were displayed on the Facebook platform. The functionality of the page to allow communication exchanges in real time to all users together with the previously mentioned data sets show that the communication gaps for flood warning that exists in the study in the study area could be resolved. One aspect of the platform was to show that the system could provide critical information to the public, but at the same time, for user action, provide information to hydroinformaticians for future use. The aim was to create situational awareness when a flood warning was issued and allow residents to make informed decisions. When I returned to my home country, the idea is to figure out how best to incorporate the data and information that is currently available into similar hydroinformatic systems, working along with our partner agencies. This is to complement the existing flood warning system currently installed in my country. Also, I will take a leading role in looking for ways that my agency can improve on the hydrometeorological network to collect real-time real rainfall and water level data for analysis and forecasting. To my fellow graduates, across our respective specializations, at some point, we will need to get a message across to some group, groups, or the population at large. Budget constraints are a reality, so don't overlook the freely available tools that can be easily tweaked to get that message out in an efficient and instant manner. Finally, I take this opportunity to thank the government of the Kingdom of the Netherlands and IHEDEL for providing many of us the opportunity to study and be here today under the SEED Scholarship Program. The knowledge acquired and the te technologies used put me in a unique position to fulfill some of the responsibilities mandated in the strategic plan of my agency. Generating the best results with the available data will help to guide the decisions made in providing a quality service to our population. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Angelica and Jason, for sharing your work with us. I would now like to invite to this stage this year's student representatives, Mr. Juma Medeke from Tanzania, Ms. Chi Yasarai from Nepal, and Mr. Junaid Ahmed from Pakistan. Please come. Former members of the Executive Committee of the Student Association Board, they will share their reflections on the past 18 months. Please give them a warm welcome. Good afternoon, director, vice rectors, professors, senior lecturers, other academic staff and non-academic staffs, distinguished guests, and invested guests, families and friends, colleagues, most important, the graduates of IHE, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon again. It's a great honor to have this opportunity to represent 138 MSc students from more than 48 different nationalities of the world. In all of us here, we are missing a proper English word to express our joy and happiness. This journey started way back 18 months in October 2016 when we arrived here from all four corners of the world. It looks very length trip, but not really. Today, the class of 2016, 2018 are represented here as the one who are graduating from the prestigious and largest water institute in the world, IHE. We have accumulated a lot of knowledge and experiences during our stay in IHE, as well as the Netherlands. Finally, we made it. Congratulations, Congratulations or of a round of applause, please. Time, fl okay. Time flies. And nobody can realize that 18 months ago, we all were boarding planes, buses, and and uh, trams and uh, traveling to the Netherlands, covering thousands of kilometers from our country, traveling here. Most of us has to go through like transits at airport. We were really tired when we reached at Iskepal airport. But then we received warm welcome at airport. And let me share you a, 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 with you guys a personal experience of mine. When I uh, came to the Iskepal airport and at the immigration counter, the immigration officer, when he took my passport, he asked me, kya hal hai? in Urdu language, which is my national language. And it really took me with surprise. And even for that particular moment, I forgot Urdu. And then, and then, and then I, uh, it was so amazing, you know, I was expecting something like, why are you here? And he was asking me, how are you? And that was really nice. That made me realize that this is my home, home, home country and I'm not away from my country. Indeed. The reception from IIT, from the airport, to the, our hostels was warm and amazing. The, we were in new environment, new country, so we were enjoying our first week. The first week started with familiar, familiarization with Dutch culture, traditions, and we learned new Dutch words from our new Dutch friends. And we really tried to pronounce it well. But sorry, <laughs> I can pronounce it correctly. <laughs> yeah, my seniors used to tell me that first two weeks in IIT is like honeymoon period. So enjoy as much as possible. And yes, we were taking boat and city tours, uh, visiting the dunes, learning to ride bicycles, and 
we were dancing in Macarena and Bulindilela. So it was really enjoyable moment. We were partying and enjoying our time. We felt relaxed and welcome. And memories are still fresh in our mind. Besides the wonderful first weeks, which was full of relaxation and free of stresses, modules we are launched in a speed of light. <laughs> we found ourselves in a challenging situation of real estate studying in this priestess water institute. They rushed to classes with half slept head, as we are not able to figure out when the day starts and ends. Things change rapidly, like floods, time to time, day to day, and week to week. Indeed, stress started to mount, and we, li we lived like home alone guys, moving here and there, releasing stresses. The long lectures and deadlines for non-stop assignments made us grounded for days. This was time. You find everyone confused and asking if we are really in IHE. IHE here means? Institute, Institute of, of Holiday <laughs> in Europe. Europe. But, but it was, it was Institute, Institute of, of Hard, hard Working work and Effort. effort. <laughs> <laughs> this master's degree was not less than a mission for us. A mission that required skill, dedication, hard work, enthusiasm, and loyalty as well. Obviously, this mission was not a piece of cake for us, as we had to go through very tough times. But this institute made us to believe in ourselves and extracted the hidden qualities that were inside us. And there were a lot of difficult times during the journey when we had some missed exits, obstacles, some hurdles. But every time, we found a person holding a signboard saying, don't worry, you can do it. Maybe it in the form of a friend, lecturer, mentor, supervisor, or any other IIT personnel. It was very amazing. We are gratified for your help, support, and love. A round, round of applause, applause for all of you. For all of you. Life in the Netherlands was challenging, not because of IIT, but because of weather. It, is, it comes in a style of more or less. More or less. It changes per second of measurement, very unpredictable, very dynamic, and changes every second. No clear demarcation of sunshine and rain. It feels like they are all the same. This was one of the surprises for us. And we really, really longed for the sunshine, like we were waiting for a long lost love. We figure out, then we figure out that the relationship of Netherlands with the sun is very complicated. <laughs> but yes, some of us enjoyed the snow for the very first time. And it was thrilling to walk on the frozen canal and it was an amazing experience because it happened many years back. Besides the Dutch culture, IHE being a hub of water professionals all around, around the world, this gives us an opportunity to learn different cultures and social values, and most of all, got the opportunity to test foods from different parts of the world, like sausage herring, stroop waffle, dal bat, Ugali, biryani, spaghetti, roti, etc., etc., and so forth. As well as we enjoyed diversity of, of language from parts of the world. This would have not been possible if water is not a universal connector. Thus, water connected us all here, and we are living as one global family, despite our origin and very diverse cultures. A round, round of applause, 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 please. please. <laughs> we participated in various extracurricular activities during our stay in Netherlands, from room parties to class parties to ethnic parties to regional parties, dancing all the night. But there were some international nights also, social culture nights like Asian nights, Euro-American nights, African nights. 
that gave us an in-depth idea of the culture and tradition of various people they, where they come from into the IHE. And we, they showcased their ability and they performed and showed them their ability of dance, singing and celebrating them. And it was really lovely to see them performing on stage and it gave us an in-depth idea of what their culture is all about. And at the moment, it is hard to say which was better than the other, but for sure, we all were superb and well done. Congratulations, Congratulations to all. all. Of you. Round, round of applause, applause for the achievement. For this. Despite of the pressures and all classes we had, starting hard with those, like we said, IHE is Institute of Hardworking Efforts. It comes an international day where IHE proved that we are not here just only for books and reading. We showed them, other institutes, that we are here not only for books and reading, despite the pressure in our studies. We brought back the overall trophy to IHE, where it belongs. You, you might think that we did it by chance. No. We are dedicated in sports from chess, badminton, darts, athletics, volleyball, basketball, football, to mention few. We maintained the overall trophy again this year, and it's 10 out of 11. IHE participated in 11 competition and won 10. So it's 91%. It's a distinction one. Distinction. distinction. Therefore, we are leaving here, IHE, and leaving the challenges to the junior MSc students that we are leaving this, the trough where it belongs. And we hope you will maintain it. Big round Big of applause round of for applause ourselves. Applause. Today, it marks the start of a new journey in our professional careers. After 18 months of hard work, with acquisition and accumulation of knowledge and techniques, we have opened ourselves to the outside world, which is full of challenges regarding water, like water conflicts, climate change, sustainable development goals, to mention few. We as a water professional are expected to solve water challenges by bringing amicable solutions which compromises with all the water usage principles on how to solve challenges on reality on the ground. The solutions that we have been taught or we have gained might not be similar to what it, what it is in the ground. So that is a real challenge for us. Hence, it is best to provide the solutions which include all without friction. Let us go back to our countries and hence provide best solutions Sorry. without frictions. Let us, let us go back to our countries and become blessings, being in ambassadors for change and not otherwise. At last, but not the least, we would like to express our gratitude towards IHC, our sponsors, professors, lecturers, our friendly staffs, especially social culture office, our friends for giving us stunts and making our stay in Netherlands worthwhile. A special thanks to our family for, our, for their love, support, and patience, and to all of you. Thank you so much. Asanteni Shana in Swahili. Dheere dheere dhanyavad. Bahut bahut shukriya in Urdu. Thank you, Bell. Thank you very much, Chi, Junaid, and Juma. It's almost time to begin the awarding of the diplomas.
But first we would like to ask for everyone's help. We know that once you receive your diploma, it will be tempting to start your celebration straight away. But we kindly ask that you quietly return to your seat out of respect for those receiving their diplomas after you. We would also like to ask all of our guests to remain seated until every graduate has received his or her diploma. There will be plenty of time to congratulate and take photographs during the reception here in the church immediately following the ceremony. Also, our photographer will take a photo of each graduate here on the stage. These photos will be distributed to the graduates this evening at IHE, so don't leave the party without your photo. Once everyone has received his or her diploma, we will all stand while the professors leave. All students and guests here are welcome back in the church for a short reception before proceeding back to IHE Delft for dinner and the farewell party. Please note that you can return to IHE through the main entrance on the West Vest. The outer Delft entrance will be closed. Graduates, remember to take good care of your diploma during the festivities today and always. Store it in a safe place because it cannot be replaced. Now the moment you've been waiting for, the awarding of the diplomas. We will start with the 15 SID students. IHE Delft is proud to be the recipient of a special category of fellowships from the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs, SIDS Fellowships. SIDS stands for Small Island Developing States. We are delighted that today, 15 student recipients of Fitch SIDS Fellowships are graduating. Here to tell us more about this program is Karen Rulofs from DGIS, the Director General for International Cooperation of the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ms. Rulas, welcome. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear students. I've got only two minutes, so I'll keep it short and sweet. I'm very honored to speak to the second batch of MSC's graduates from the Special Fellowship Program for SIDS, SIDS. In August 2015, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs decided to fund this program because the SIDS faced considerable challenges in the area of water management. They are also important partners in climate negotiations. The SIDS, like Europe and some other countries, are pushing for high emission reduction targets in order to limit global warming to two, or even better, one and a half degrees Celsius. Although the SIDS did not contribute to the problem of climate change, your countries are often highly vulnerable, not only because of water-related factors like sea level rise and the incidence of extreme weather events like cyclones, but also because of the size remoteness and narrow resource base of most SIDS. Climate change affects many aspects of daily life. Most of the effects will impact water management. Droughts and floods often get worse issues, gets worse, sorry, issues water managers need to deal with. Back to the SIDS program. With our funding, a total of 25 students followed an MSc course at UNESCO IHE, now IHE is Delft. Another 70 students followed a short course. Last year, I had the honor to hand out four diplomas to SIT students. Today, the group is much bigger, and I'm very proud that a total of 15 students from the SITS will receive an MSc diploma today. And amongst them, I see many women. I would like to congratulate you and your professors on these remarkable achievements. I trust that your studies at IHE Delft will provide a sound basis for your work in your home countries. I wish you a lot of success back home, and I hope that Delft and Holland will always have a special place in your heart. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Rulofs. I would like to ask those professors and coordinators presenting their diplomas to the students with SIDS fellowships to be ready to come to the stage. I will call your names one at a time. After your photo, please return to your seats until it's time for the group photo. I now would like to call to the stage Eric de Ruyter and Professor Irvin. Mr. Louis, Fiji. Thank you, Eric and Professor Irvin. I now call to the stage Ines Sloker and Professor Mujanovic. Ms. Smith, Jamaica. Thank you, Professor Bojanovic. I now call to the stage Professor Kennedy. Ms. Kisun, Suriname. Mr. Bartholomew, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thank you, Ines and Professor Kennedy. I now call to the stage Ilias Marcy and Professor Svartefein. Ms. Paul, Belize. <laughs> Mr. Nariva, Fiji. Thank you, Ilias and Professor Schwarzfein. I now call to the stage Johann Reins and Professor Rulfink. Mr. Harris, Jamaica.
Thank you, Professor Rolfing. I now call to the stage Professor van der Meer. Mr. Sharif, Maldives. Thank you, Johan and Professor van der Meer. Please join us on stage, Alessandro Catapan and Professor Franca. <laughs> Ms. Young, Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you, Alessandro and Professor Franca. Please join us on stage, Gerald Corso and Professor Solo Martin. <laughs> Mr. Ernest, St. Lucia. Thank you, Gerald, and Professor Solomutin. I now call to the stage Jochen Weniger and Professor McLean. <laughs> Ms. Vervai, Suriname. Mr. Abi Komoros. <laughs> Mr. Bruno Granada. Thank you, Jochen and Professor McLean. I now call to the stage Suriati and Professor De Fratur. Mr. Ramey, Mauritius. Mr. Whitaker, Jamaica. Thank you, Suryati and Professor de Futur. 
This concludes the awarding of the diplomas to the students with SIDS fellowships. Would all those students please return to stage for the group photo with Ms. Rulofs. Listen to the photographer. He'll show you how to stand. Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Rulofs. We will now continue with the awarding of the diplomas for the environmental science students. I call back to the stage Eric de Ruyter and Professor Irvin. We will start with the environmental science and technology specialization. <clears throat> Mr. Bumivat, Thailand. Mr. Das, Bangladesh. <laughs> Mr. Irungu, Kenya. Mr. Mwana K, Kenya. <laughs> Ms. Ukwa Medua, Nigeria. Ms. Wambuku, Kenya. We continue with the environmental planning and management specialization. Ms. Pachachashvili, Georgia. <laughs> Mr. Dukure, Gambia.
Mr. Islam, Bangladesh. Ms. Osorio Garcia, Colombia. <laughs> Mr. Sherpa, Bhutan. Ms. Sahib, Lebanon. <laughs> Mr. Ambaye from Ethiopia. Ms. Kisalu from Uganda. <laughs> Mr. Gitaiga, Kenya. Mr. Jujuko, Uganda. <laughs> Mr. Kuitonda, Rwanda. Ms. Nyashanu, Zimbabwe. <laughs> Mr. Okalong, Uganda. Ms. Tui Senga, Rwanda. <laughs> Mr. Wanjala, Kenya. Thank you, Eric and Professor Irvin. This brings us to the Urban Water and Sanitation Program. I would like to invite to the stage Ines Schlocker and Professor Donojic. And now for the Sanitary Engineering Specialization. Ms. Amuta Lingam Shiva Balan from Sri Lanka. <laughs> Ms. 
Mr. Berger Arambari from Uruguay. Ms. Barcala Paulilio from Uruguay with distinction. <laughs> Ms. Buenaño Vargas from Panama with distinction. Ms. Da Rosa Santos from Brazil. Ms. Penalty Alonso from Uruguay with distinction. Ms. Nyanku Shikwa from Zimbabwe. <laughs> Mr. Mugambi from Kenya. Ms. Mapeta from Zimbabwe with distinction. <laughs> Ms. Banegas Camero from Colombia. Ms. Supriyatin from Indonesia. <laughs> Mr. Shrestha from Nepal. Mr. Sharma from India. <laughs> Ms. Popolo Carocio from Uruguay with distinction. Thank you, Professor. I now call on stage Professor Kennedy. Now the water supply engineering specialization. Mr. El Qadir, Sudan.
Mr. Kuai Ghana. Mr. Medina Aristizabal, Colombia. <laughs> Mr. Copo, Ghana. Thank you, Ines and Professor Kennedy. This brings us to the Water Management Program. I would like to call to the stage Elias Massy and Professor van der Saag for the Water Management TaylorMade Profile. Mr. Bosch from the Netherlands with distinction. <laughs> Mr. Dahal, Nepal. Mr. Wasaha, Kenya. <laughs> and the Water Resources Management Specialization, Ms. Andreta from Italy with distinction. Mr. Abu Bakar, Ghana. <laughs> Mr. Bojang, Gambia. Mr. Kwanza, Ghana. <laughs> Ms. Mavoyo from Zimbabwe with distinction. Mr. Tariq, Pakistan. <laughs> Mr. Siburian, Indonesia. Ms. Sivunza, Swaziland. <laughs> Thank
Thank you, Professor van der Zaag. I would like to call on stage Professor Svartefein for the Water Conflict Management Specialization. Mr. Chiquita Hoguen from Mexico. Ms. Fuela Sufa, Indonesia. Mr. Silva Noboa Sanchez from Peru. Ms. Bayonia Balurama from Colombia. <laughs> Mr. Paul from India. Ms. Nakanjako from Uganda. <laughs> Ms. Tete from Ghana. And now, the Water Services Management Specialization. Mr. Barnes from Ghana. <laughs> Mr. Omud from Uganda. Mr. Muleta from Ethiopia. <laughs> Ms. Ford from the United States of America. Thank you, Professor Schwarzfeld and Ilias. We have arrived at the awarding of the Water Science and Engineering Diplomas. Would Johann Reins and Professor Rulfink please join me on stage for the Coastal Engineering and Port Development Specialization. Mr. El Gondor, Egypt. Mr. Lou Kiros, Panama. <laughs> Mr. 
Ms. Ying, China. Thank you, Professor Wolfing. I would like to ask Professor van der Meer to join us on stage. Mr. Manzo Salazar, Mexico. <laughs> Ms. Ningram, Indonesia. Mr. Leo Padron, Mexico. Thank you, Professor van der Meer. I would like to invite Professor Rana Singh to join us. Ms. Martinez da Cruz, Uruguay. Mr. Vasquez Gianella from Peru. Thank you, Johan and Professor. Now it's time for the hydraulic engineering and river basin development. Would Alessandro Catapan and Professor Franca please join me on stage? Mr. Agonafira, Ethiopia. Ms. Asar, Pakistan. <laughs> Mr. Derse, Ethiopia. Mr. Dahal from Nepal with distinction. <laughs> Mr. Hussein from Pakistan.
Mr. Ilanga Singa from Sri Lanka. Mr. Haider from Pakistan. Mr. Osman from Sudan. Ms. Parvin from Bangladesh. <laughs> Mr. Mamo from Ethiopia. Mr. Maksud, Pakistan. <laughs> Mr. Magaju from Nepal with distinction. Mr. Usman Ali Khan from Pakistan. Mr. Muzaffar Khan from Pakistan. Mr. Hassan Khan from Pakistan. <laughs> Mr. Jayati Laka from Sri Lanka. Mr. Tapa from Nepal. <laughs> Mr. Tivari from Nepal. Mr. Tiga, Ethiopia. <laughs> Mr. Tesquera, Ethiopia. and Mr. Ahmad, Pakistan. Thank you, Alessandro and Professor. Would Gerald Corso and Professor Solo Mateen please join us for hydroinformatics, modeling and information systems for water management.
Mr. Ali, Pakistan, with distinction. Ms. Chu from China. <laughs> Ms. Claura Gutierrez from Bolivia. Mr. Ibrahim, Pakistan. <laughs> Mr. Hamouda, Egypt with distinction. Ms. Mu from China. <laughs> Ms. Mohammed from Sudan. Mr. Jafar, Pakistan. <laughs> Mr. Zhang, China. Ms. Chu, China. Ms. Shao, China. Mr. Shen, China. <laughs> Mr. Serrano Suarez, Colombia. Ms. Rang Pan, Thailand. Thank you, Gerald and Professor Sola Mateen. Would Jochen Wenninger and Professor McLean please join me on stage for the hydrology and water resources specialization. Mr. Hafiz Hamad from Pakistan. Mr. Junaid Ahmad from Pakistan. <laughs> Mr.
Mr. Chowdhury from Bangladesh with distinction. Mr. Casillas Trasmina from Mexico. Mr. Fakhari from Iran with distinction. Ms. Kodali from Italy. <laughs> Mr. Gonzalez Carballo from Spain. Mr. Olande from Kenya. Mr. Odeke from Uganda. Mr. Leju from South Sudan. <laughs> Mr. Zimo from Canada. Mr. Silva from the Philippines. Thank you, Jochen and Professor McLean. Finally, the Land and Water Development for Food Security Specialization. Would Suryadi and Professor De Fratur please join us on stage? Mr. Akulia from Ghana. Mr. Alvarez Carrion from Bolivia. <laughs> Ms. Rai from Nepal with distinction. Mr. Opio from Kenya. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Kunena from Swaziland. and gentlemen. This concludes the awarding of the diplomas. My dear congr graduates, congratulations. Let's give them a round of applause. So, the picture's taken. I would now like to welcome back to the stage Maria and Chris, together with Uwe Best. We will now hear a song, unwritten by Natasha Benningfield with a message about living your lives with arms wide open. This concludes the 2018 closing ceremony. Please stand for the song and the procession. My tries are outside the lines. We've been conditioned to not make mistakes, but I can't live that way. No, no, staring at the blank page before you open up the dirty window. Let the sun illuminate the words that you cannot find. Reaching for something in Bye, bye. 
Release your inhibition.